Shalom. The preparations for the Passover have started here in Israel and I think in every Jewish community around the world. We're just less than two weeks from the Passover. Passover is uh, the main holiday of the Jewish calendar. In fact, according to the biblical calendar, according to the biblical calendar, it is the first holiday because the month of Nisan is the first month of the year according to the Bible. I know that the Jewish people celebrate Rosh Hashanah or New Jewish New Year in September. Uh, but it is on the first day of the seventh month, which is the Feast of Trumpets, the seventh month. The first month is Nisan. Another name for Nisan is Aviv. Aviv means the time of the blooming. And if you travel in Israel now in March, the end of February, beginning of March, all the way through March and the middle of April, you'll see the fields green, full of flowers, wonderful red anemones, the lily of the valley, uh, with many different kinds of flowers, even some orchids, Judean orchids here in the hills of Judea. Beautiful time, springtime. And the feast of Pesach, of Passover, falls on the 14th day of the month of Nisan. The 14th day is always a full moon. It's a full moon because we are going according to the lunar calendar in, in, in Judaism. The ancient calendar of Israel was a lunar calendar, like all over the Eastern world. Until today, all of the east, uh, east of, of, of us, east of Europe, go according to the lunar. The Chinese, the Persians, the Indians, the Ch Japanese, the Koreans, all go according to the lunar calendar. So the 14th day of Nisan is the beginning of the Passover, Passover Eve. And it is full moon. And like all the holidays of Israel, except the Esther, which is also in the 14th of, of, of Hadar, the last month of the year, are connected with history, an historical event. Here we're talking about the exodus of the children of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt, and going into the Sinai Desert in order to reach the land that God gave to Abraham some 400 years earlier. And God swore that it will be given to Israel as an inheritance forever. That's found in, in Genesis 13, verse 15, and in other places. So, it's a historical holiday. It is an agricultural holiday because immediately after the first day of Passover starts the early harvest, the first harvest of the fields over here, of, of grain, of barley and wheat. And it is also a cosmic holiday because it is connected with 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 the events in the cosmos, the full moon and the beginning of spring. All these things are tied together. However, for, for believers in the Bible, for Jews and Christians, Passover is mainly an historical holiday commemorating the great act of salvation that God did in the history of the Jewish people. Every act of salvation, including what Yeshua or Jesus, according to Western way that they call him, uh, did is connected with the Passover. When, when Yeshua comes to John the Baptist to be baptized and essentially start his ministry, John the Baptist proclaims him the Lamb of God that came to take the sins of the world. What the Lamb of God? The Lamb of God is connected with the Passover Lamb that is killed on the eve of Passover by every household in Israel when they were in Egypt. And Yeshua is called the Lamb of God in the beginning of his ministry, but also at the end of history in the book of Revelation, Yeshua is called the Lamb of God. 
So Passover is not only a Jewish holiday. It is a biblical holiday. It's a holiday that Yeshua and the apostles kept. It's a holiday that the, the Jewish people kept for, for thousands of years, commemorating the exodus from Egypt, the deliverance from slavery into freedom, from darkness into light, from oppression to the freedom of God's presence and revelation as it happened in Mount Sinai. Just a short time, 50 days after they left Egypt, God revealed himself to the whole nation of Israel. 600 men able to do war between the age of 20 to 50, which means that if they had wives and children, we're talking 600,000 men between the age of 20 to 50. If, if, if we count that they had wives and children, we're talking about a huge crowd gathered at the bottom of Mount Sinai to receive the, the, the Torah, the, the revelation from God, the instructions from God of how to live and how to be godly and righteous people. So Passover is a great holiday, but it's very interesting that when we talk about the holiday and all the preparation for the holiday, where God's emphasis is given. I'm going to read to you from Exodus chapter 12, which is actually the story of the Exodus, and the slaughter of the lamb, and the putting of the blood on the doorpost. In that context, God reveals the following from chapter 12, verse 25 on. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep his service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by all this service, by all this work that you're doing? That you shall say, it is Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt and when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. Notice, it's all about the children. The holiday itself is a memorial of what God did. And in fact, everything that Jews do is connected to this memorial. When we do Friday night Shabbat dinner, we say in memory of the exodus from Egypt. So it's a very important central event in our history, but also in the history of all Christians and all believers in God and in His Word, the living Word, Yeshua, our Messiah. I will continue this in the next session. But for now, I want to tell you that even the New Testament is full of Passover from the beginning of Yeshua's ministry to the end of his ministry. In the end of, of, of world history, when history will not be no longer, what will happen? The devil and all of his angels will be cast into the sea of fire. The sea of fire is a picture of what happened to Pharaoh and his army when they were cast into the end sea. Yam Suf is translated as the sea of reeds, it's true. But the same word without the vow, different vows is the end. And so... Even the end of history is connected to the Passover event and feast. And check the next session, you'll learn some more.